Arc 3.0 and Warlocks are a match made in heaven in terms of sheer ability usage, and when you think about it, they are generally the number one class around this for all ability based content. But nothing can match what Crown of Tempest and Arc can do, well, except for Fallen Sunstar to a degree, but the point still stands. If you have ever used Crown, then you know how obscenely powerful it is, so let me show you what it's capable of in Arc 3.0 style and why this is an in-game ready build for the most simplest of users out there. But you know what else is obscenely powerful these days? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then I would really appreciate a like, a sub, and for you to turn your notification as it goes a long way for me. For the subclass, we'll be using Stormtrance as this provides the best coverage in hitting multiple enemies at once. As similar to how Fallen Sunstar is, we will be making the use of Ionic Traces, Elemental Wells, and the Exotic itself for a self-sustained ability region setup that can be used anywhere you like. You don't need a lot to make this setup work in your favour, but I found the following to be the most useful. So let's go over the aspects and fragments used for this. We have Lightning Surge, which allows us to turn into a ball of lightning and bring down lightning onto our position. We then have Electrostatic Mind, where defeating a target with arc abilities or being jolted and blinded will create ironwork traces. Collecting traces will make you amplified as well. For fragments, we have Spark of Discharge, where arc weapon final blows have a chance to create ironwork traces. Spark of Resistance, which provides a 25% damage reduction while surrounded. Spark of Ions, where defeating a jolted target create ironwork traces. And Spark of Shock, where your arc grenades jolt targets. For stats, we have 18 Resilience, 18 Discipline, and 15 Strength. You can go for Tier 10 stats if you wish, however I found that just reaching Tier 8 stats is enough for you to generally get your abilities back quickly and with little effort. This is a very nice setup that anyone can reach, and still see its effects in full without having a full clue as to what's happening. For key mods, we have Battle for Wealth for getting 2 worlds instead of 1, Thunder Might for a 25% weapon element buff of matching type, Thunder Wisdom for a plus 15 intellect regen speed, Elemental Ordnance where using your grenades can make wells, and Seeking Wells which allows wells to track to you. The great thing about using Crown of Tempest is how absurdly strong it is, and how it doesn't require a lot to activate it. Getting the Arc Kill will give you a good chunk of ability energy back, and if you balance your stats out correctly, you can get back your ability use within seconds. Once you add in Iron Traces and Wells to the mix, you can use your abilities non-stop with little cooldown involved, and this can be done by anyone. Nothing complicated, just get an arc ability kill and go from there. This is why if you ever want to use a setup as quick and simple, then Crown is the exotic you'll want, and no matter what setup you have in mind, Crown the Tempest will work 100% of the time, as long as it's arc, of course. Now for weapons, we can pick and choose the arc weapons as the abilities are the main focus of the setup, However, there is a specific weapon that all users should try first before trying other things out. For primary, we have the Riptide Fusion with Auto Loading and Chill Clip. I've covered this many, many, many times before, but it has to be said how powerful the weapon really is when up against anything it's pushed towards. Being a rapid frame type allows it to follow up shots quickly and efficiently, while also freezing the target for X amount of seconds. Great for bosses to majors and such, and even more great when using the endgame. Take note though that it's not going to be that useful in GMs unless you have all your anti champ mods covered at first. Once you have those covered, this weapon can help out with extending your life longer in much tougher content. Secondary, we have the Trinity Gorn Zotic, which is a god tier arc bow, greatly used for endgame and clearing. Not a great weapon to use against bosses and such, but its main appeal is how it can be used against minor combatants easily. A single kill with it will make you charge, and then your next shot will shoot arc lightning onto anyone hit by it, and allow you to repeat this again and again. This simple design allows the weapon to single handedly clear rooms of combatants out with just this weapon alone, and racks up kills into the thousands, thanks to its ease of use. Combining it with an arc build is generally a no brainer, since arc abilities are great for ad control in small to large areas of mass. Using it with Crown of Tempest though allows you to spam the arc amplified effect on your weapon, even without getting a kill with weapon. This means that you can clear rooms out faster by just one ability alone. If you want more ability energy though, then the Cold Heart is also a good choice to pick, as it can produce iron chases by the bucket load, even though you have to be careful with how much ammo is drained in the process of using it though. For Heavy, we have the Chain of Command Machine Gun from last season and it is quite effective with being used for low tier to end game content. 
With this weapon, you can use Osmosis to change weapon type to Arc, and from there you can use the Phantom Might buff for a 25% weapon buff, or use it instead to break shields faster, or produce grenade energy faster. Not a lot of people are talking about the Heavy, as they believe it is generic to use, but its effectiveness with heavy elemental based builds can make it stand out better when compared to other heavy machine guns available in terms of usage. For our stats, we'll be focusing on Discipline as the main primer of the setup, and this will allow us to spam our abilities and get energy back quickly for all our abilities in use. Having our Discipline at 80 to 100 is probably the best choice you can make for how simple the setup is, and you don't need a lot to make it work. Sticking with Storm Grenades and Elemental Ordnance is more than enough for you to get the ball rolling on your end, and then adding on Crown of Tempest pretty much allows 10 second grenades to be a thing. Of course, depending on content, you may want to swap this out for other grenades as well, which you can, but you've got to be careful of the duration that most grenades offer. Pulse grenades are great for continuous damage, but at 2 minutes cooldown rate, you might be better off using something faster and can be applied on multiple times if the duration allows it. For resilience, keeping it at 80 is also good for damage reduction, although having it at 100 would be better in the long run. 100 resilience combined with spark of resistance 25% damage reduction and chest piece will make you very tanky and useful in the most toughest content around. The dream stat section would be to have high damage reduction and 70 to 80 recovery for rift regen rate, but this means that you would need to be very lucky to pull this off. Nonetheless, where it's currently at is still fine and usable since you won't be too close in most fights. For melee, you can leave it at 40 to 50 thanks to the Crown of Tempest effects, although adding on heavy handed more could help with steady regen as well. Such a setup really doesn't need much unless you start sort of off. Just net multi kills and watch what Crown can do in seconds for a low stat as shown. Left over wide with Ashes to Ashes for more super energy via grenade kills. Harmonic Cypher mod for creating all power via matching arc element, Absolution for faster ability energy cooldown from picking up all the power, Machine Gun Scavenger mod for getting bonus ammo reserves, Bad Amplitude where damaging a champion with arc ability causes them to be jolted, and Distribution where it will reduce your ability cooldown when you use your class ability near targets. Now, here is a list breaking this all down into one. For head, we have Discipline, Homework Siphon, Ashes to Asses, and Battle of World mod. Army of Resilience and Fondle Might mod. Chest, we have Discipline, Film Shot Plating, because of Damna and Fondle Wisdom mod. Leg, we have Resilience, Machine Gun Scavenger, and Absolution, and Elemental Orders mod. Bond, we have Resilience, Distribution, Bad Amplitude, and Seeking Worlds mod. Like the many times Crown of Tempest has been covered, the exotic fields now is due to perfectly and allows the users to really lean into the power fantasy of the build. Using your abilities back to back will allow you to instantly replenish them in a short time frame and repeat as many times as you like with little cooldown involved. But thanks to Ionic Traces and Elemental Rolls, you can practically keep your melee stat at a low range and your discipline stat at a high range, and this is enough for you to get a rapid cooldown of your melee as if it was at 70 to 90. For many of you who may struggle with builds and stats, this means you guys can balance your stats out however you please and still have a good cooldown rate just by netting kills and collecting buffs off you go. The melee or discipline, the choice is down to you as long as you use the following exotic and commit to it. Such a simple build allows you to mop up ads in seconds and in large groups which is handy for tougher content out there. I've used such a build before in GM when Arc 3.0 wasn't a thing and it still does amazingly in content to where a simple dreg could kill you in one shot. If you use your abilities right and combine it with Trinity Ghoul, you can easily take on endgame content solo without help and it's a very good combo that any new or old player should rely on if you have them. Although Fallen Sunstar has also come out and is similar in design to Crown, Crown gives you more energy out of the pack there and then. Well, Sunstar requires you to make full use of Ionic Traces, which on some maps can be quite difficult to do. Ultimately, the build is the same as to what we're used to, but thanks to Arc 3.0 introduction, it allows users to become even more amplified while on the field. You don't even need to have Elemental Worlds to make the build work, as a subclass update is both simple and in-depth to use. Once GMs come out, I would highly recommend you use this setup because of how simple and fantastic its ad clearing option is. But I would also recommend you play with someone who has the Sunstar Azotic as well, as that Azotic will grant allies some energy as well if the given user collects Ionic Traces. This can lead to some interesting combos with the right team, 
and allow you to spam abilities at a much higher rate than what we got. We'll just have to wait and see, of course. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny related stuff. And once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.